Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. I woke up this morning, right? Because I watched an NBA game last night and it was between uh, the Clippers and the Indiana Pacers. The, the same Indiana Pacers that went to the playing tournament uh, championship, right? So I was watching that game. The Indiana Pacers were trying to keep it competitive, but then it got to a point where the Clippers started blowing them out and they were playing so good. I couldn't even believe what my eyes were seeing. I could not believe what my, like it was, it was James Harden. Then it was Kawhi Leonard. Then it was Paul George. And it was Paul George. And it was James Harden. And it was Kawhi. I mean, it was really, really uh, scary how good of a team, uh, you know, they were. And at the end of that game, I was saying to myself, like, like, what am I even seeing right now? Like, when if this team starts to click, what are they becoming, right? And they ended up winning their eighth uh, consecutive victory. So I woke up in the morning because I knew the Lakers were playing, but I didn't watch the game because it was a later game. However, what I was unaware of was the fact that the Lakers were supposed to be doing their ceremony night. Some of you may be asking, what's the ceremony for? What did they win? Well, it turns out that the Lakers were, in fact, serious about actually hanging up the in-season tournament banner in the rafters, get this, next to their actual NBA championships. So I woke up this morning, and I'm going to share some of the Im images that I shared on my Instagram. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, my handle is C-T-A-B-A-N-Z. And I started sharing some of these images, and I was watching it. You can look at it right now. I, was, I, I couldn't believe that the Lakers fell to this, like... I couldn't believe what my eyes were showing me. It was so embarrassing. I couldn't make sense out of it. I was like, the Lakers did not really do this. And I was going through the comments. You had people that were laughing at it. And then you had people that were actually embarrassed by it. And they knew that it was cringy, but they had to cover up. And they're like, well, what do you expect them to do? I mean, well, they won it. What do you expect them not to win? Everyone that was watching knew that, number one, that was cringy. And number two, it was an absolute embarrassment of a of of a of a job uh, that the that the, that the Lakers did. And you see LeBron and these guys looking at it. And the funny thing was, we actually got a we actually um saw one of the audios. Listen to the audience. Do you know that the people in the arena didn't even care? Do you know that the vast majority of Laker fans, when they were announcing that banner, did not even care? And why should they? Why should they? The Lakers are supposed to be the golden standard of the NBA. They have, what, 17 championships. They have they have had players, the, 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 some of the names of the players that have played for the organization. You're talking about Jerry West. You're talking about Will Chamberlain. You're talking about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You're talking about James Worthy. You're talking about Magic Johnson. You're talking about uh, 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 Shaquille O'Neal. You're talking about Paul Gasol. You're talking about Kobe Bryant. As of recent, uh, excuse me, as of recent, uh, you have LeBron James. You're talking about these caliber players and the rich history that is surrounded that organization to now getting to the point where the Lakers are now actually putting up a banner of an in-season tournament that half of the fans that were watching did not even understand. And to give you guys some more context, the two teams that made it to the in-season tournament championship, that, that made it to the championship round, both of those teams, I believe, have been one and four since the in-season tournament. That is what they've been. No one has looked at the Lakers nor the Indiana Pacers and accused either of those teams of being the best teams of their conference. No one actually seriously believes that either of those teams are going to come out of their conference to represent uh, their conferences. Right now, to me, I think the golden standard in the Western Conference still is the Denver Nuggets. Those are what serious people are going to be betting on. And then, of course, you have other teams like the Dallas Mavericks, the Clippers, and other teams you may throw in the Lakers, et cetera, et cetera. In the Eastern Conference, of course, you're going to have the Boston Celtics. Of course, you're going to have the Milwaukee Bucks. You may throw in Miami. I haven't, paid, I haven't looked at their standings as of recent. But those are the serious teams. Nobody's looking at the Indiana Pacers. But nevertheless, these are the two teams that go in there. And to me, I got to ask the question, when did the Lakers' standards drop so low? When did it become so low? I actually put up a, We actually put up a poll. Uh, before producing this show and I polled the audience 
and it was targeted specifically at Laker fans. And I said, and Laker fans, if you guys uh, haven't voted on this poll, please make sure you go ahead and vote. Uh, we only published it about an hour or so. I'm going to ask the following question. Laker fans, are you seriously proud of the Lakers raising that banner for Laker, for Laker fans only? Of the 1,200 people that have voted, 80% of them say no. 80%, 20% say yes. One, one fan says, as a Laker fan, it's truly embarrassing. Another person uh, uh, said, 10, year, uh, 10 years from now, Charles will be driven by the focus by the focus fans have on that tournament, whatever. Um, other people says, um, wow, won the in-season tournament, currently eighth in the Western Conference. Sure, they should be proud. And then some other people, basically the, the, the general sentiment, and this is from some Laker fans, was they were embarrassed. They were embarrassed. It was cringeworthy. And they place so much of an emphasis on it, and I don't understand why. Now, some people say, "No, it's not the Lakers; is the is the is the NBA that's forcing." So the NBA forced the Lakers to hang that banner to make it something. So I don't believe that, because the, the NBA didn't force LeBron and these guys to be popping champagne and wearing goggles. The NBA did not force LeBron to go out there on his Twitter, uh, excuse me, on his Instagram, and t uh, and put an image of Drake, not an image, a quote of Drake talking about i'm only one wing away from mike and, and then 37 seconds later deleting it no one forced lebron to, he did that all on his own the nba didn't tell him to go hey here's a drake lyric go post this and then delete they thought they actually won something of significance that nobody cares about this is the fact that no one takes this championship serious to me what i think it is is just another way to create second place second place prize uh trophies and participation trophies that's all it is that is all it is. No one really cares about it. At the end of this year, no one is going to say, oh, man, the team that won the NBA championship and the team that won the playing tournament, those are really two, two of the best. No one is going to say that. Because the playoffs is designed in a way for you to truly understand who the best team is, given the volume of games you're going to play in order to get to the championship round. That's what's going to determine who truly, who, who, the, who, the, who the great teams really are. And to me, man, I don't understand what the Lakers standard is, standard is uh, anymore. I really don't understand it. Um, you know, and I also put up the other post about an hour or so ago, and I said this, and I'm not taking it back, and this is exactly how I feel. I said, as a lifelong Kobe Bryant fan who made me root for the Lakers, I refuse to support the team for as long as LeBron James is there. They went from the Kobe Bryant standard and the Lakers standard to this nonsense. I cannot get with this madness. What happened to the standard Kobe set? Kobe would have been embarrassed for the Lakers if they hung that banner last night. To me, it was an embarrassment because now is devaluing what an actual NBA championship is. That's what it is. And to put it right next to, an, to a real championship? It's embarrassing. It's cringy. And it looks desperate. That's what it comes off as, as desperate. Nobody cared, including the vast majority of the Laker fans that were in attendance. They don't care. But to go hang that banner and you're the Lakers? I can understand if somebody said, well, it's the Clippers. Clippers didn't want anything. Okay, I can kind of uh, uh, picture that. But the Lakers? So I was woken up this morning when I when I jumped on my Instagram to look at some of the images, uh, you know, from NBA, Bleach Report, and all these various sources uh, of the Lakers actually hanging an in-season tournament banner. And I got to say, um, when I saw that, I, I was in total disbelief. I was in disbelief that the Lakers find themselves, you know, going this low to to go out there and hang this banner. And, maybe, and it made me begin to question, what would Kobe Bryant have thought about all of this? As you guys know, Kobe Bryant played uh, 20 years for the Lakers. And he was one of those players that actually understood that the Lakers were all about championships. And it's something that I believe Kobe truly believed in. And I think that it was something that he looked he looked he looked for in other players that were looking to become teammates of his. Like, do you understand where you are? When he when he walk into the door, do you know where you are? Do you know what we are about? Do you know the purpose of us being here? 
the expectation is for us to win championships i was uh, and, you know, and i put up a comment about this recently someone said you know uh what did kobe bryant give to the give to lakes i'm like well hell he helped them win five chips and somebody's like oh well he did that on the back of Shaq." really you go find Shaq's phone number and ask him if he carried kobe if you can find Shaq, ask him did he carry kobe and oh uh by the way when Shaq left how many rings did kobe win how many more times did Kobe go to the finals after Shaq left? I think Kobe went to the finals with three years in a row and won two championships back to back. How many cha championships did Shaq win? One. So your point is people say it like as if they were talking about some some regular dude. Like we're not talking about some top five, top three dude. We like we're not still talking about the same dude that dropped 40 points on every single team in the NBA. Like we're not talking about the same dude that got more 40 point games than Stephen Curry and LeBron combined. Like y'all acting like we talking about some run in the mill top 75 guy like as if they're not levels to it so when people say it, i'm trying to figure out like what so kobe was what exactly like he's not the dude that was averaging 35 a game in the slowest era in terms of pace in nba history like we not talking about that dude the dude that made 12 all uh, all defensive teams nine all first are we not talking about that dude like what do we, they said it like as if i'm trying to say so what kobe was what whack i'm trying to figure it out so to me um that's how i felt so what happened about a week or so ago people kept on sending me this clip of kobe when they were talking about the lakers flirting around with the idea of hanging this in-season tournament banner and then somebody sent me a clip of where kobe was where it was explicit about the lakers hanging up uh, uh gimmicky banners to try to make themselves feel good for not winning a championship so for those of you who didn't hear that clip we actually want to play it for you but before we even get into that this video is brought to you by our sponsor aura do you know what the fastest growing crime in america is today it's identity theft imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who's the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened in addition Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at Aura.com slash Dreamers Pro and when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below also know that you're supporting this channel thank you so what we want to do is want to play this clip it's a very short clip of kobe bryant basically expressing his thoughts on this particular issue and then we're going to come back and continue on the show take a listen to what kobe bryant had to say here this franchise does not hang division banners <laughs> it does not hang conference championships <laughs> we hang one banner and one banner only and that's nba titles and you may not like it you may think it sucks you may think it's not great sportsmanship get over it it is what it is it's a city of champions for a reason so you heard what kobe had to say um to me listen as a person kobe made me become a laker fan but i'm going to be totally honest with you and i don't really care who feels the type of way about it i'm not up here to twerk it up for you guys i'm gonna tell you guys exactly what i think i am not going to be a laker fan until lebron retires at least from that team i can't do it i'm not with all the antics I'm not with all the gimmicks. I'm not with all of the narratives. You see, the Lakers, there are two narratives that have been persistent over the last six years. And some people say, oh, what was what were LeBron, what were the Lakers before LeBron got there? Uh yeah, the Lakers were a very bad team when Kobe was there. This is when he was injured. He had tore his Achilles. He had also ruptured. I think Kobe was what 36 when he retired, 36, 37. Uh he had also had, I think, tore, um, um uh, messed up his shoulder. So he was a much older player. He had gone through an Achilles. A career ending injury at that age did lebron ever had any career ending injuries i don't believe so but the very next year when lebron joined the lakers after kobe retired uh, what did they do and as i remember they were talking about a storm coming and what happened they didn't make the playoffs 
So y'all are acting like as if this great thing happened. Nothing happened in LA until Anthony Davis got there. That's what happened. And y'all saying it like as if you're talking about the dude that didn't help that champ that franchise win five championships and go to seven championship rounds. Not the bubble. We're talking about five legitimate championship runs in the tougher conference. So I don't know what y'all are talking about. Y'all acting like as if the Lakers won six championships since Kobe retired. They won one bubble ring. One of those years didn't even make the playoffs. I don't know. Two of those years didn't even make the playoffs. No, what am I saying? Throughout LeBron's center, I think he's been there for six years. About three of those years, they didn't even make the playoffs. They didn't make the playoffs. And I think one of them, they lost in the first round. So what are we talking about right now? The year when Kobe made a guarantee with Steve Nash, Paul Gasol, and all, we guarantee you they actually made the playoffs that year. And he tore his Achilles with, I think, two games left in the season. But they made the playoffs. So I don't know what y'all are talking about. Whatever. This is what gets me with some of these guys. They act like as if they're the only ones that were on earth walking around. Like as if they had their own facts. Like we don't know what actually took place. So to me, listen, um, I cannot support this team as long as LeBron is. I can't do it. Because there are two narratives with the Lakers. Two. The first narrative is uh, how good are the Lakers going to be, right? And if they're not good, uh, what's the problem with the Lakers? Who do they need to get? What are, that's the first story narrative. The other narrative is whose fault is it? Who, who, who needs to take the blame? Is it Anthony Davis? Is it Russell Westbrook? Is, that's, the, that's been the, the, the two prevailing storylines about this team over the last few years. And there's no accountability whatsoever. Whatsoever. There's no accountability. It's all about who can we point blame on? Who can we blame for the woes of the Lakers and all of these different things? And to me, I just can't believe that. I can't believe it. So listen, um, I cannot support this team. I will not support this team uh, as long as LeBron is there because uh, I'm not with all of these antics, man. The weirdos are running the building. I left it in the comment. The weirdos are running the building. They simply are. Like, this is some weird stuff. And I'm not with it. I know it's La La Land and all of that. Some of you are late correct. I don't care. Let me repeat it once more. I don't care care i don't support the direction that this organization has gone in since the passing of kobe y'all been they've been on some some funny style you know what i'm not doing it let lebron retire from that team then let me see how they start acting then i'll probably start supporting again but with this iteration of it i'm not with it and some of you, you can support too thick and thin you can kiss my ass Let me get into this topic. So one of the topics right now in the NBA is the Lakers, right? It ain't going to be the Clippers, even though they won eight in a row. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's the Lakers. Yesterday, they decided inexplicably uh, to go up there and hang that in-season tournament banner, which, I mean, I couldn't even believe that they actually did that with a straight face. Like, I could not even believe they did that, right? And when I woke up, I was actually so perturbed. I'm like... Bro, what is what is what 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 where 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 are we right right now? Like where what are we doing right now? How do the Lakers go from winning championships and that being the standard? Magic Johnson talking about they don't hang conference banners. Kobe Bryant talking about they don't hang them. That's not what they play for. To now popping champagne for an in season tournament that you won in seven games against the Indiana Pacers, a team that has gone one and four since that. And what happened? The Lakers played against in, uh, what is it the New York Knicks yesterday and they lost that game. Right. So I'm trying to figure it out. Are, were they that good or were they serious about the tournament? Was it about the money? No one really knows. So what happened? Woke up this morning and I was curious to hear what some of the bigger uh, voices in sports media were going to say. So I tune into Undisputed and I come across a clip uh, from Richard Sherman. Right. And as you guys know, Richard Sherman is from L.A. Uh, and he's also a, a Laker fan. Right. And they asked Richard Sherman. In this case, they were talking about Skip Bayless. He asked Richard Sherman to weigh in on the Clippers, I mean, excuse me, the Lakers deciding to hand, hang, excuse me, uh, the in-season tournament banner. And when it came time for Richard Sherman to talk, you could see that he was totally embarrassed for the Lakers, that they actually went out there and did that. So for those of you who didn't hear that, I want to play it for you. But before we even get into that, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, Aura. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. <laughs> 
Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who's the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web, and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened. In addition, Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds, someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at aura.com slash dreamers pro. And when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below. Also know that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we want to do is want to play exactly what Richard Sherman had to say about the Lakers hanging his banner, and then we're going to come back and continue on with the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. In quite a weird production out of raising their new in-season tournament oh banner before last night's home game. Then they lost to the Knicks, dropping the Lakers to one and three since beating Indiana in that quote-unquote championship game. So, Richard Sherman is a lifelong Laker fan from L.A. Were you okay with this big championship banner ceremony? Skip. Skip. I'm glad we lost. I, you know, very infrequently, okay. I'm rarely yeah. ever happy we lost. Yeah, I got but it. But I hope that was a signal that you shouldn't have. The great Kobe Bean Bryant is rolling over in his grave. Yep as we, we raised this banner for an in-season tournament. He specifically said on camera multiple times, this franchise, which is the only franchise he ever played for, only raises championship banners. I can't imagine if he was here, if, if, if he'd be on this show right now, he'd probably be in the Lakers facility tearing it down. He probably because would. Yeah, because yeah. you only raise championship banners. You don't raise division banners. No. You don't raise conference championship banners. You don't raise anything but the world championship banners. And that shows a different quality to your players. A different you only you only retire numbers of Hall of Famers. That shows a different quality of your organization and how you do things. You do it in a championship manner. An in-season tournament banner. Whoa, mm. Skip. It has come to this, Keyshawn. Oh, stop, Skip. Yep. This is a small scratch on an elephant, man. No, is it? Big... Yes, absolutely, 100%. I don't think you love I don't it. have a, look, I don't have a problem with it. I have a problem with the location of Thank it. Thank you. The location of it is, I'm like, nah, not next to that. It just doesn't even look, it look out of place. Move it on the other side of the arena or something like that. I don't have a problem with them doing it at all. It's that's not next to the five from Minneapolis, I think. Yeah, but that's still, that still does it. It's still in the I, wrong still, position. I got you. Right? It just is. Um, but that's not why they lost the game. So you heard what he had to say. Listen, um, even him, who is a lifelong Laker, could not even fake it. Keyshawn was up there. I don't know what Keyshawn. Keyshawn's point was the Lakers didn't lose because they hung the banner. And we're like, were you embarrassed for them? Because to me, the in-season tournament is nothing but a participation trophy. And let me hip you guys up to something. Most of those guys who were playing so hard would not have even cared if there wasn't a financial incentive. Let me say that once more. Had there not been a financial incentive, the guys that you saw running up and down would not have cared. Because the teams that actually won or that made it to the finals, how they've been playing since then. They were dangling $500,000 at the end. Now that they got the money, where's the motivation? Where's the motive? Which speaks volumes, by the way. Which really speaks volumes because the last time I checked, you're being paid for those other games. Or is it that that money wasn't guaranteed? So you saw an opportunity to go out there and get some extra money because that wasn't guaranteed because you had to win it. And now when you know you're going to get guaranteed checks, ah, let me sit back and relax. Which speaks volumes. 
about this current NBA, but that's another topic for a whole nother day. Whole nother day, because it's not like they're being paid enough. So I'm, I'm not even going to touch on that. Back to the original point. To me, listen, um, it doesn't get much more embarrassing than it did last night. It doesn't get much more embarrassing than it, than it did last night. It really doesn't. And I have no words for it, to be totally. I, I couldn't believe the Lakers did that. And to have a Laker fan say that himself, it wasn't like I said that was a Clipper fan. It wasn't as if that was a Boston Celtics fan. That's a Laker fan. Even he was like, I'm not going to sit up here and twerk it up with you guys. You have people on the table pinching his leg, like, yo, come on, come on, twerk with me. Like, nah, I'm not doing it. I'll give you a box of honey. Nah, I'm not doing it. I don't want it. I don't want to do it. Even he was like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. I, I can't twerk with you dudes. I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I can't twerk with you. So to me, um, this is not something to be taken seriously. And it says something else, which is something else I was thinking about. You notice how so many other teams didn't even care? Even though there was a financial incentive, you notice how so many other teams did not care? I think the vast majority of the teams in the NBA that are actually serious about winning a championship knew that this is not the goal. You don't go into the summer preparing for a season to go win the in-season tournament. I don't even think I don't even think the serious teams even care. And I don't even think the serious NBA fans even, I don't even, I didn't watch the tournament because the rules were too confusing and I just tuned out. Because to be quite honest with you, had the Clippers won, here's the, here's the irony. Had the Clippers won this tournament, they would have been saying it's the biggest joke ever. They would have been saying it's the biggest joke. But since the Lakers won it, now all of a sudden we're supposed to legitimize this nonsense. Had Kawhi Leonard been the, been the one, they would have been like, you didn't win no championship in LA. It's a joke. But because the Lakers won it, and LeBron fans got a moment to twerk it up all over the place, knock over people's drinks, busting it wide open. All of a sudden, now we got to take it seriously. But they would have been the same ones talking about Kawhi Leonard and all. What does he want since in LA? And I'd have been like, but they won the NCAA tournament. That's not a championship. But they the same ones running around talking about Goat James, Goat James, uh, Billy Goat. Goat James got five rings. Really? Who did he beat? How did he get that fifth ring? Who did he beat? What playoffs did they go to? Man, please, y'all better. The, 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 the in season tournament is so ridiculous that you don't even have to qualify to enter. What's the qualifications, really? At least the playoffs, you got to have a certain record to make it into the playoffs. What's the qualification? What's the qualification to make it into the playing tournament again? Man, please. It's a total, it's a total disgrace, but I guess they got to sell some. I don't care about it because this is, to me, this is just one big gimmick. And as an NBA fan, I have the right to say that. I should be allowed to have a position and my position shouldn't always be complimentary. People should, people should be allowed to have a view. That's not a hundred percent savory. There should be multiple views and then let people that listen form their own opinion. Don't try to curtail people's opinion. Oh, you need to say it's great. No, if I don't think it is, I'm not saying it is. And those people, those voices also need to be heard. I'm saying that for a larger reason, maybe for people that want to curtail, curtail the message, curtail the message, silence certain people from not always saying nice things. I don't think that's right. 